welcome to today's webcast. There's no doubt that it's an incredibly exciting time to be a marketer. We've got access to state-of-the-art technology, a wealth of tools right at our fingertips, and we're also impacting every single touch point that a customer has interaction with. But boy, is it really getting complex. Along with educating ourselves on the new shiny tools that seem to be popping up daily, we also have to manage our teams, push out content faster than ever before, and sometimes even justify our jobs. With all this going on, we're definitely feeling the pain. Today, I'm joined by Rob Brown, Education Director at Simple. Rob is a well-known keynote speaker, both locally and internationally. He's a high-profile marketing consultant, acquisition expert, and also a board member. Together, we're going to address the top 10 pain points that marketers feel. How are you today, Rob? I'm very well. Thank you, Sarah, Welcome. for the intro. Yes. Um, look, and it's a bit of a controversial um, topic for, for some marketers. Yep. Um, um, and I, I've, before we, we, we get into the, the webcast, I want to say that I love marketing. I'm a passionate this is marketer. An yeah, marketing, yeah, right? Let's just absolutely. get that straight out of the way. And look, I really hope that the, the, uh, of the couple of hundred people that have signed up for um, today's webcast, that most of them do work in the marketing mm. department because, you know, most organizations and certainly some of the organizations I've worked in, um, there are, you know, there are people in accounts, there are people in finance, there are people in procurement who hate marketing mm. and they hate marketers as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, marketing has, 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 has been through a bit of an identity crisis, I think, over the last sort of mm. few years where nobody kind of knows what the marketing department does. Yeah. You know, they, they make the pretty brochure that comes out once a year, um, but the marketing director and his, his managers or her managers are always off at product launches mm. or long lunches and what do they actually, you know, what value do they actually add to the, the business? And and um, and so I think, you know, marketers haven't really had a tool um, or the tools, the tool set, if you like, mm. to justify what they actually do. Yeah. And I think that's part of the part of the identity crisis. Mm. And obviously that's changed. And today they do have that. Yeah. And, and we'll talk more about that at the end. Yeah. But I think it's, 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 there's never been a better time to be a marketer. There are more channels than we've ever had before. But we're going through a transition and marketers do need to be more accountable accountable than they've ever been today yep. and so I think it's it's you know and that that transition is causing some pain mm -hmm. and I guess those pain points um, that we're we can all experience yeah are, are, are what we're going to talk about today great so we're going to go through the top 10 pain points um, please feel free to interact with us by asking us questions to do with any type of pain point I'm going to throw them over to Rob he's going to do his best to answer them which I'm sure he will um, and also feel free to tweet uh, the hashtag is on the slides things I had about marketing so number one spreadsheets now we've got a quote here from people and it's the whole thing about marketers and spreadsheets and do they mix do they work but what's the issue with marketers and spreadsheets oh look I think the issue Sarah is it's it's a left brain right brain yeah. thing um, I mean most marketers are, are, are sort of right brain creative types mm. who like to you know invent come up with campaign themes titles you know imagery um, and spreadsheets obviously are a, a, a logical left brain um, you know, they, they belong very much in that department. And I think not all marketers, but a lot of us um, have really, really struggled, you know, really struggled with, with just, just sort of communicating what we're trying to communicate through spreadsheets. And I mean, some of the worst spreadsheets I've ever seen in my life have come from the keyboard of a marketer, mm. sometimes my keyboard. Um, and, you know, you see some spreadsheets, they just make your skin cruel. Mm. They make Elvis turn turn in his grave. Um, so I think, you know, and it's a bit like asking, you know, a spreadsheet jockey in the accounts department um, to come up with a, you know, whiz-bang brochure or flyer, you know, or landing page concept. They, they, you know, you can imagine the result. So I think that's that's where the pain has really... So what can we do about it? Because I think the reason why marketers do use spreadsheets is because they've got the data there. They need something to put the data on. Um, there's a recent report that actually came out of the US uh, today, um, and it's the state of, email, state of marketing. And one of the things that came out of that is only 12% of marketers feel like they're meeting expectations when it comes to justifying what they're doing. So we know what we need to do. We don't have many tools there. The only thing we can use is Excel. So how do we alleviate this pain point? Well, I think the first thing that most marketers can do is uninstall Excel or stop using Google spreadsheets. Okay, now, that's I know easy. that's that's a, that's a simplified. <laughs> of course, you can't do that. But yeah. I think, you know, before you brief something in on on an Excel spreadsheet, or you know, ask yourself, is there is there a better tool? Yeah. Is there another way to do this? And I think there are several cloud-based, you know, centralized marketing calendars that show exactly what's going on. I mean, your marketing plan typically mm. is an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. 
but there are some awesome tools and obviously you know simple is, is it, you know has that functionality we'll talk about that at the end but it's not just that I mean I think if you if you're moving away from from spreadsheets you can really ensure that your campaigns are sort of on time on budget on brand mm. a, you know a, a spreadsheet is a is a point in time it's not a living thing it's got to be updated you know um, constantly so I think a web-based solution is is you know is one way to avoid that that, that and pain point obviously we can share that around as well yeah. so it's not just Absolutely. you working on yeah. something um, so I just want to talk about briefing for a little bit because yeah. I think uh, briefing is a huge challenge for a lot of marketers to get right and I think there's a lot of clarity more often than not and there's a lot of you know a lot of the times briefs take on this life of their own essentially mm. and then you've got the whole okay I want you to do this mm. well what's the brief oh, yeah. let's just make it pretty or let's yeah. just make it sexy which is what you spoke about before yeah. so this is something we all face every single day yeah. and we've heard at least once and I can sort of uh, picture people nodding their heads yeah. over in webinar land yeah. so what's this all about look first of all before I mean this is a real pain point for me and I'm mm. sorry to use a photo of your fiance there uh, Sarah and um, you know in so, yeah okay but look <laughs> The briefs, I mean, I, I used to run a big marketing operation um, for a big education group and, uh, you know, we would have global education, we, we, we'd have briefs coming in from all over the world, yeah. from, you know, the Europe and North America and, you know, Pakistan and Hong Kong and all these kind of places. And, you know, every every other day we were getting briefs, can you just make me, a, you know, a brochure like the one you did last year, just just mm -hmm. change the change the date and, you know, it's or can you make me a, a flyer like the competitors have got, but yeah. absolutely no no details and the back and forth that, 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 that is required just to get clarification on what that person actually wants is mm. just it's just a time waster and um, it used to eat into the, 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 the so much of my team's mm. weeks just sort of seeking clarification on what mm. they what, what was actually being required so, so that's a real pain point for me so obviously we need a pain point uh, a process then yeah. and obviously we need to communicate that so what are the, some tips because obviously like you said if you are working with an yeah. international team yeah you do get Chinese whispers come yeah. through and it's a lot harder to manage those sort yeah. of things so what are some tips for managing briefs look I mean there's a there's a there's a, there's a training piece there yeah. immediately there 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 you know and I think a briefing process needs to be non-negotiable mm. it needs to be template based there needs to be a a format and yes it might take you longer it might take you 20 minutes to brief in a job or a campaign initially whereas it takes you two minutes or two seconds to write a mm. I, can you do me a flyer yeah. for for you know the end of the day um, but the amount of time that's saved as a result of having that clarity and having those forcing people with obligatory fields um, that you have to fill in this piece we can't we can't you can't submit this brief and you can only really do that through a, through a, through an online form so I think you know setting up a briefing form or process for your for your marketing team and just force you know there will be some people that you'll have to that will go you know kicking and screaming down mm -hmm. that path and I've you know I've had many conversations even recently you know when talking about simple with with marketing teams and I say yeah but our teams will never they just won't do it well they've got to do it mm -hmm. you know it's That's it's it. who's in charge and um, the, the, the the time saving to the organization I think is is, is you know certainly from my experience is mm -hmm. significant um, so I think you need to centralize synchronize your briefs um, so that you can store and reuse critical information you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time mm -hmm. so do me a fly like you did last year um, well you've actually got the brief there in your system you can just resurface it make your modifications and there's a huge time saving there too. Just want to touch on the training bit um, and just get your opinion on this. So I think, um, you know, we can have the best systems yeah. in place, but if people um, aren't actually trained on how to use them properly, then obviously they fall through, through the cracks. So would you agree that these days um, it's best not to assume that everyone knows how to write briefs? And I think, you know, that skill of coming into a marketing team and knowing how to write briefs or even, you know, assuming that people all have marketing degrees yeah. or have worked yeah. in big teams before, yeah. we need to be careful that we don't have that assumption yeah. and we actually do provide people with the right training yeah. as opposed to letting them just go and figure it out on their own yeah I totally agree I mean I think it's it's, it's to assume that people know how to write briefs yeah. is even getting further I think most you know assume that people even know how to write yeah. to communicate their ideas in writing I mean you know with most organizations there are very few mm. people who are really really good writers yeah. so being able to you know uh, communicate what you're trying to communicate in a, in a that's why I think training and that tight 
tight briefing form is absolutely critical. Yeah. Um, and yes, it's change, it requires some change management, but at the end of the day, if you don't do that, you're going to struggle, you're going to be pushing uphill uh, yeah. forever in a day. Let's talk about priorities, um, because I think um, one of my favourite things is to remember, you know, there's a difference between time and priority. A lot of yeah. people use the time excuse when actually something isn't really a priority. Yeah. So when we go into the third pain point, we're talking essentially about these priority priori prioritisation, let me get that out, ping pong. So how can we stop this going back and forth? Because obviously it's perception, right? And what I think is important may mm. not be as important no. to you. So how do we deal with this and what's this pain point that we're all feeling? Well, I think, I mean, you know, you start your week and you know you've got your priorities, you've got certain things that you've got, even your day, you've got certain things that you absolutely have to get through. Um, and so you sort of naturally, you know, as humans, we, we sort of organise things in our own mind and prioritise. Mm. And the, the, I guess we could have called this pain point queue jumping because yeah. there are so many people in most organisations and, you know, it's a dynamic environment. There are mm. things happening. There are, you know, you're dealing with humans. That's the problem. And humans are generally not very organised. And so it might be your boss or, you know, the boss of another department suddenly comes to you and say, I need this by close of business mm. today. Can you just drop everything? This is now the priority. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, I've got other priorities. So I think, you know, it, it, it's a pain point that most marketers can, uh, you know, this this sort of just constantly shuffling sort of um, list of priorities, but they're not always just your priorities. The other people are just jumping in yeah. and uh, imposing their priorities on you. And so, there's this whole concept of by COB today. Yeah. Um, before we get into this, just a question from Catherine. So um, just a reminder, if anyone has any questions, to type them in. So Catherine said, I get the whole issue with prioritisation and it does come up quite frequently. However, how do you combat this with people asking from the entire organisation? So this is even bigger. Yeah. It's not just people yeah. from the marketing team. Yeah. We've got people from different departments saying this, 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 yeah. this. Yeah, and I think, again, it comes, for me, it comes down to a lack of visibility mm -hmm. of what the marketing team is working on. Yeah. Because it's just, to send it to marketing. They'll do a brochure, they'll do a flyer, certainly yeah. a, a flyer in a day. I mean, it's just a flyer, a couple of pictures and a couple of lines just of text. Just get it up, just get it up. So I think, you know, and I mean, you know, if you've got visibility over what the marketing team is doing, if you can see what's in their queue, if everybody in the organisation, I know that's a bit of a pipe dream at mm. some, you know, in some organisations, especially big organisations, but I think if you've got that lens of this is what they've got on their plate, mm. people might hesitate before they ask, or they might at least understand that there's a notion of a queue, mm. and the jobs actually have to join a queue, and they have to be allocated, and that, you know, Simon's on holiday, day this week and I can see that Mary's got her plate mm. absolutely full. So I think visibility for me, Sarah, is the is the is the solution. Mm. And so if I was Mary, uh, yeah, for yeah. example, and this probably goes back to pain point one, yeah. having that calendar yeah. or that one yeah. place of you know that source of truth yeah. where you can have everything there. Yeah. But don't just have that within the yeah. marketing team, actually yeah. filter that throughout the entire organization. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And the, the, the entire organization don't all need to be, you know, having access to which Whichever system that you're using or Mary's using, but they need visibility over yeah. that system. Yeah. So we you don't know, want people to yeah. get in there and start no, playing with no, stuff. And no, absolutely. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a word that I'm actually quite sick of, but I know that it exists: yeah. collaboration. Yeah. Um, so I think um, it's important that we talk about the chaos that collaboration can sometimes um, yeah. make happen. Because yeah. I think a lot of the times there's this whole thing of you know we need to collaborate, but we don't know how, but we're not communicating, but then we forget, and we've got these emails going back and forth. So what is this pain point relating to? Look, I mean, I think email is the yeah. is the you know the biggest culprit, um, and you know email is not going to go away anytime yeah. soon. I mean, we're we're seeing new new collaboration tools enter the workforce and certainly into the marketing the marketing team. You know, Trello, Slack, mm -hmm. those kind of tools, which people are you know are resonating with people because they realise it's just easier than email, and and you don't have information falling between chairs, yeah. and um, but. The collaboration on a marketing, you know, a marketing uh, assignment or a, a campaign or a job where you've got 10 people copied in on an email and nobody kind of, nobody's really, you know, pe a lot of those people are only paying, you know, attention out of the corner of their eye to that email. It comes through there. Very often they're not reading it. Mm. And so that's where, that's where the problem really, you know, really happens. And that could be, you know, at an approval level. It could be at a, I thought John was doing this, this was, was going to mm. go and source the stock imagery. Im imagery. I thought... 
you know, Julie was going to write the text. Um, so it's just chaos. And that, that is, a, you know, reflective of so many marketing teams around the world where, you know, their email is still the primary source of communication, especially in the, you know, the, 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 the world we live in today where you've got people working from home and re working remotely and in yeah. other countries and, you know, so. I um, you've picked up here on a workflow management tool. So can you just yeah. elaborate on what that is, um, or even you know how that would work within a marketing team? Yeah, look, a workflow management tool is you know so let's say you've got that central central eye, that central yeah. lens, central source of truth on what's going on. So campaigns and, and jobs are being briefed into this central central system, and then. Tasks have been allocated just by, you know, by, by at tagging people. Um, so at tag John Smith, at tag Mary, you know, Mary Mika, at tag whoever, and they are basically then notified by email that they've been assigned to a job. Mm. And then as the as the team manager, um, you can then see exactly what people are doing, who's working on what, how much they've got on their plate, and you can you can track the progress of that job all the way through from briefing through to execution, delivery and then approval mm -hmm. um, so you know I mean certainly you know in my from my experience I couldn't imagine running any marketing team without this kind of this kind mm -hmm. of tool yeah. um, being able to see what you know because I used to and I, I used to run marketing teams without that visibility mm -hmm. and then when you suddenly can see everything from a central perspective it's like you know you've been groping around on the stage like in the, the dark lights. and then somebody switches <laughs> the stage lights on it's like oh my god it's like the first time you saw Google Analytics yeah, report yeah, yeah. you know it's like oh man this that's a, that's awesome happening. yeah so I think for me that's that's absolutely mm -hmm. critical and being able to communicate who's doing who's doing what, when's it got to go out the door? You know, show me what's late. Show me what's you know what's what's in my, you know. I think that's that for me. Yeah. yeah. I think what I'm picking up is we we have to stop going around and trying to chase all this information. Yeah. We need to have it there, yeah. don't we? And I think that feedback loop Absolutely. is incredibly, yeah. incredibly important. Yeah. And um, just on that, we're at the halfway mark now. Um, but as we get towards the end, please fill out your feedback in the survey. Speaking of feedback, see what I did there? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about rules. Um, because we all have rules there for mm -hmm. a reason. Yeah. Um, we don't like to break them. Some yeah. of us like to sort of sway on either side of them. Um, but this whole approval thing with legal and compliance, yeah. and, you know, this is when we're really talking about different um, departments within the organisation. Um, you know, some people do just make up the rules as they go. Yeah. And, you know, as a marketer, yeah. it can be quite frustrating because it's like, oh, God, you know, yeah. how can we just get this done? Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about this, um, and especially dealing with those legal risk and compliance departments? Look, I mean, it's the age we live in, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute um, with approvals. But you know, unfortunately, and again, marketers—it's not just the people outside the marketing department; it's people inside the marketing department who very, very often make up the rules. Yeah. I mean, I've worked with people who are, you know, have sent an email to, you know, you know, twenty thousand people, mm -hmm. and when you say. But, you know, Susan, why did you do that? Yeah. It's like, you know there are rules. Oh, look, I was rushing out the door. I had to go and pick up my kids from kindy. And yeah. it's like, you can't do that, you know? Um, so, look, I mean, the, the reality is this, this, this reality is not going to go away. Yeah. You know, rules are going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. So it's just, we, as marketers, we've just got to accept them. Mm -hmm. uh, set that fact. But how do we make it easier to, 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 to sort of manage around those rules and mm -hmm. work, you know, work within the, within, you know, swim in our, our swim lanes, if you like. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, job templates are, uh, you know, having those job templates are, are, are one of the key sort of, you know, key solutions to this. Um, and, and again, that central system where everybody everybody works in the same, everybody mm. swims in the same swimming pool. Even if they're in their lanes, yep. they're all in the same, they're all in the big pool. They're all in the 50 meter pool. You haven't got people swimming off in the, the kids pool and the 25 meter pool. Mm. They're all there. Um, and then just that visibility over workflows, I think yeah. is absolutely critical, you know. It's, uh, you know, so yeah. as a team manager, you can see what's going on and, and what's not going on in some cases. Definitely that visibility piece. Okay, um, so number six, the police, the pole pole. Yeah. <laughs> so here, um, we're sticking to the theme of rules here, and you're always going to have those people who are sticklers for process, mm. and you're going to have those people who don't necessarily mm. do follow the processes. So, um, you know, the fact that we understand that is yeah. probably a good starting point, yeah. that we do have two different types of people in yeah. this world and in your teams. Um, but, you know, this is obviously a pain point for marketers. Yeah. And why do you think it is such a big pain point? Oh, look. 
again, it's 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 that left brain, right brain thing. Yeah. I mean, the process police have been after me for years, Sarah. I mean, I've had they've had wanted, you know, my team. It's like wanted, literally yeah, wanted yeah. posters, you know, Rob Brown, where you know, for not following process. Mm. And it's just like I know I've got to log into the system every morning, and I know I've got to. I'm supposed to be, mm. and it's like, but I've always been used to doing it on email. So I've always so been, much yeah, though, like, yeah. You know, like we said at the beginning, yeah. we've got all these different shiny tools and all these different, like how many um, passwords do you have to log into something? Yeah, of, co of course. And, and you, you just make them all the same and yeah. then you get in trouble for having the same passwords and That's there's right. always all these processes. Don't so introduce another screen in my life, okay. you know. I've, always, I've already got like four screens, five, yeah. that's about as much yeah. as I can manage. It's yeah. like the apps on your phone, you know, you use three or four apps, at maximum five most people, even though they've got 60 or 70 on their phone. Yeah. It's the same with all your, your marketing tools, mm. you know, just just keep it, you know, minimise the amount of screens. So I think, you know, this, this you know, comes back to this, these, these campaign playbooks that you can, you know, the templates that you can just go to. So just make it easy. Take out friction. You know, take out steps. If you can take out steps and make it easy for me, then you're gonna. It's more likely that I'm gonna follow the process, and the process police will get off my back. Mm. Um, because as I say, I'm the biggest culprit of this, um, and I think a lot of marketers can relate to this out there. Just let me create. Let me come up with. I don't, don't want to be following the process, mm. but we have to. We work within. You know, we work with other departments, and 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 there are more and more marketers who are much more process driven today, and have, yeah. uh, have come from a much tighter sort of education system where you know this is this is you're not allowed to do that you've got to follow process and now you you know you, you're collaborating in a much bigger okay, team. Okay so conscious of the fact that a lot of this stuff has to come from the top down yeah. and if you're at the top and you're not doing it then obviously it's not going to. Yeah. What's this um, point number three here yeah. where we talk about champions uh, a champions program or super users is that yeah. sort of creating this tribe and recognizing people's skills and getting them to sort of become the police? Yeah, look, I, I mean, a police is probably the wrong yeah. word because it's, it's, we shouldn't need, if our systems are set up properly, we shouldn't yeah. need the police, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and in every marketing team, whether you're a team of three or you're a team mm -hmm. of 53, there's always somebody who is good at this, yeah. okay? And I think identifying that person, it might be a, it might be somebody who's been with you, who's been in the team for six months. It might mm -hmm. be somebody who's been there who is just super reliable, super organised. Yeah. That's your champion. Yeah. And I think you know, um, and it, it's it's definitely not necessarily the head of the team, mm -hmm. okay? And and again, I think a lot of people on this webcast can re, uh, you know re, yeah. re, relate to that. It's like my boss is terrible at that yeah. um, or I'm terrible at that. But there's always somebody in the team who is much, much better at it than, than most of the others, and that's that's your champion. Yeah. So I think giving them the license to to, to 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 come up with a process, come up with training, whatever, mm. um, is, is the, one of the keys to success. And they'll thrive yeah. with that, won't yeah. they? Yeah, more often yeah. than not. Okay, the Department of Business Prevention. Now, I want to be careful that we don't get um, too many people offside when we yeah. talk about this, um, yeah. depending on who we are talking to. So um, this is where we really talk, we're really talking about your blockers and yeah. your bottle next yeah. aren't we so um, I think um, in the past we've defined you know the blocker as that colleague who's always flat out on an urgent project and everything's really really urgent yeah. um, but then you can never pin them down on any yeah. detail and then yeah. you've got also the people or the CMO who tells you that they'll get back to you yeah. by the end of the day then they go to a conference they don't approve anything yeah. and you just sitting there going oh my god what yeah. is happening this person's a massive bottleneck so I think we've all been there at least once yeah. in, our in our time um, and probably other departments have as well so yeah. this is a pain point, what can we do? Um, we obviously need these legal and risk compliance teams, yeah. um, but what do we do? Look, I think by its very nature, marketing is market facing. Yeah. Um, so it's the external sort of um, facade of the company, you mm. know, or, or a product that the company produces or a service that the, the company. So it's, you know, from if you're sitting in the legal team, marketing is the, the big, one of the big red flags, you know, mm. it's like, you know, I need to keep a special eye on marketing like and I need to, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I need to pay more attention to what's going out the door yeah. because we've been burnt before and I got a slap on the wrist and, you know, the CEO said, you know, deliver someone's head on a, on a platter. Yeah. Um, and so Everybody's been burnt by this, so people are more and more careful. So, you know, uh, something, an approval request will go through the legal team and from marketing, and it's like, People just, you know, naturally just sit on things, and it's like, let me think about that one for a couple mm. of days. But from the marketing team's perspective, that doesn't work because I've got to get this this campaign to market. Mm. I've got to get this out there. Um, so I think 
being able to identify your blockers mm. and and your bottlenecks um, is, is is one of the you know um, one of the keys. But having having an approval system um, where legal can you know legal and notified legal are also on notice that mm. they need to approve this. This is not a verbal. Oh, I'm going to send you something. There's a there's a chain of command, and in in many cases there's a hierarchy. It needs to be approved by. Um, it might be the CEO second, or the you know the, the the managing director and legal last, or it might be that legal need to approve it first, mm. and then you know then there's a hierarchical sort of um, approvals process. If you've got a system like that that's streamlined, I think it's it's you know it really it's such a time saver. Mm. And from a marketing you know marketing director's perspective or a marketing manager's perspective, it's just like. I know there's accountability on their front too mm. to get this approved and get it turned around quickly. And yeah. being able to report on that, how long did that take to uh, to approve? Mm. You know, what's the average approvals time? I think, you know, it gives you sort of an argument to, to take back to legal or where, you know, your boss in the marketing department who's who's who is the bottleneck and just yeah. say, look, this is this is this is holding back the business. Mm. And I guess stuff like this really does become so much bigger than what it is because yeah. it impacts culture. Yeah. And then that ties yeah. into brand and then yeah. the market like it all just is just like this vicious circle, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and just on that, let's slowly segue into approval tennis. Yeah. Um, because I think this is also something and you know, love him or hate. Him. We all have our curios moments yeah. every now and then where yeah. we just chuck the racket, we've had enough, yeah. we're done with this, yeah. um, we just can't get anything through, it's going back and forth. Yeah. Um, so how, how does this sit with you? Have you had any experience in this? Or am Look, I asking? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, nightmare. Uh, yeah. and, and I think it comes back to that email thing as well. You know, an approval um, approval request is sent off to six different people, mm. all all in the the main two um, yep. field on the email, people don't know. You know, who's is is Sarah going to approve this, or is Rob going to approve mm. it, or you know, I've seen so many examples of that, and it's just back and forth. Who's supposed to approve this? Yep. Can you please clarify, Rob, what you you know what needs to be approved, or who on this list of ten people that you've sent it to actually needs to approve it? Mm. So it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I think. For me, Sarah, one of the one of the keys is getting approvals off email. Mm. Again, because you know we've all again experienced who the hell approved this? Mm. Oh, I didn't see it, you know. Or I, how did that how did that campaign how did mm. that flyer get into the market or into the newspaper without me signing off on it? Mm. You know that's that you use, you've used our old logo. Mm. You know now I've got to justify that upstairs, to, you know, up the tree to the CEO who wants my head on a platter. Um, it's like who approved it? Well, I sent the email, it was sent to five people. You know, again, mm. information fell between chairs. So I think if you can move approvals off email, um, that's, the, that's the biggest thing yeah. for me. Um, and, and to do that, you need an approvals tool. Yeah. What I want to do now, um, we had a question come through about 20 minutes ago um, from Simon and he's t asking about data and the fact, yeah. you know, what are our thoughts around big data and the fact that we've got so much to work yeah. with. So let's go into the data bit now and I have been waiting to get to this to answer yeah. your question, Simon. Um, and I think the biggest thing, you know, it's, is data becoming a dirty word because you've heard so much, it's like the whole collaboration thing, but a lot of the times we just want to know what we have, who clicked what, who did what, and then bring it all together. Mm. And talking back to that um, report that came out that we mentioned at the beginning, mm. um, in there one of the stats said that 64% of marketers actually say they don't have time to actually do anything mm. with their data because mm. they've just exported everything and there's stuff here, here mm. and everywhere. So back to Simon's question, mm. what are your thoughts on data and how relevant is it today and are we getting to... Are we getting too caught up in the way that we're using it? Um, and what are the pain points associated with data? Because I feel like there's a lot happening. Well, I think I think if you look at the sales department mm. in any organisation, the, the the data metrics, the you know, on sales are, yep. are, are so much clearer. Just black okay? and white. It's it's that's my pipeline. <laughs> yeah. That's my you know, that's my that, that's my number of opportunities. That's the percentage. Mm. That's the close. That's the close one, close last, whatever, whichever CRM language you speak. So the sales metrics have always been much clearer. Yep. At the end of the day, there's a customer or there's a product sale that's happened at the end of the. Um, with marketing, I think part of the problem when it comes to data, Sarah, is that there, there's never been a consensus on what marketing metrics should should be. Yeah. And so how do you measure the marketing department? Mm. And we've been, I think, distracted with a lot of vanity metrics like 
Google Analytics. Mm. And suddenly marketers can go into the website uh, and they can pull out a report no, which has whoa. got some really pretty graphs um, which are then presented to the C-suite or to the management team and, you know, as the CEO, and you would probably be the same, it's like, what the hell has, you know, um, uh, time on site got to do with the sales? At the mm. end of the day, I'm interested in sales. I'm not interested in these vanity metrics. Mm. So I think that's, I think we've been barking up the wrong tree, to be yeah. honest, with when, when it comes to data and marketers um, in many cases. And I think if you actually, if you can define what the marketing team actually does mm. and then you can report on it, and you report on the, the amount of stuff going through the team. Most people in, in most organisations have no idea of the volume of stuff that's going through a marketing team. Mm. But the marketing team, as I said at the start, has never been able to really define what it does. Mm. Well, we do brochures and we do flyers. No, you do a lot, lot more than mm. that. Um, and to put a, a brochure together or an EDM together, there, there are all sorts of components. So I think for me, and to answer Simon's question, that's... The problem is around definition of what the marketing department does. And I think we need, we need a paradigm shift, to, to coin a cliche, um, on what metrics are important. Mm -hmm. And if I'm managing a team of 40 people, yeah. so I've got 40 salaries as a line item on the, you know, on the P&L, you know, what do these people actually do? Mm. And I think if we can define that, then we can, we can, we can get to, you know, Get to a point where marketing becomes much more credible. So it's, go, all, it's I had no idea. Yeah. No idea that you guys did that. You guys even do the annual report. I didn't know that, you know? Mm. Oh, I thought it came from just the sky. You yeah. Know? I think, is there, you know, some truth to the fact that we've almost shot ourselves in the foot because we have this stuff there, yeah. but we've never actually communicated yeah. not only the metrics that we need, yeah. but also the so what, who cares? It's yeah. like, I can give you all these numbers, yeah. but what does this actually mean yeah. and how does this impact the bottom line? Is that what we need to do to sort of just strip it all back, make sure we've got those metrics, make sure we know what we're communicating, but then also tell people why that's important? Yeah, I can, Sarah. I think if you can identify two or three key metrics, yep. um, that's that's really important. But again, it comes to the the problem. It's, it's not going to change the fact that sales is at the front of the queue. Mm. Marketing stands behind them, and the first thing the the head of any company is going to look at is the sales mm. the sales metrics. It's yep. like how are we tracking this month, this yeah. quarter, because I got to report to the shareholders or mm. the market or whatever. And so I think that that problem is not going to go away. But there are so many key marketing, like really sort of actionable insights that marketers can pull out of the, the, the tools that they currently use. Even, you know, like metrics like lead score, for example. Mm. Lead score, if, it's, if it means something, can be a super powerful metric for the sales team. Mm. Knowing at what point somebody, you know, a marketing qualified lead is likely to turn into a customer based on their aggregate lead score. Mm. You know, that's the kind of thing What are your top three? Uh, lead score would yep. definitely be one of them. Um, I think the 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 number of um, number of jobs that you know the the the, the output of the team mm -hmm. um, I think is another one definitely. Um, what a what another another key key metric. Yeah, I mean I think um, the you know the turnaround time on jobs mm. is is really you know the productivity of the marketing team. Mm. What do these guys do? Um, they're working faster and faster and their output is greater and greater. I think those are the kind of metrics that, that, mm. that I really, you know, home in on. Yeah. yeah. OK, so up to number 10. Um, now, we all have this fear. Um, how important is it to make sure that we have something there to sort of, you know, make sure there's none of this blame game? Because I feel like there's a lot of that happening. It's all about, you know, this person's blaming this person. There's people disagreeing. There's no single source of truth. So let's go through number 10. Oh, look, I mean, everyone can relate to this. And, and everyone <laughs> no matter if you're a marketer or not, yeah, right? Yeah, every, yeah, because everybody's literally covering their, their <laughs> proverbial. And yeah. um, it's... And that's just the culture of blame, the culture of compliance that we live in. That's not going to get again. That's not going to go away. It's going to get. It's going to get. It's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, and so I think you know, it, it comes back to visibility, accountability. It's like I can sleep at night. Mm. You know, um, anybody who's you know working in a marketing department where there are, for example, EDMs yep. going out to large lists of people. 
You know, most of the managers of those departments, those man marketing mm. managers, you know, have nights where they wake up in the, you know, in a cold sweat and go, oh my God, what about mm. if, you know, Barbara or John sends it to the wrong person? Yep. And and why do we feel like that? Because it's happened before. Mm. So I think if you've if you've got a central source of truth, that marketing lens that mm. that is is, you know, you are. Everybody, you're comfortable that you're in control of your team. Mm. Okay? You, you can see what's going on. Yep. You sleep easier at mm. night. And I so, so for me, that is the solution, just having that visibility. Yep. Whereas you walk in, you've got a marketing team working there, and you don't, you don't have visibility of what they're, mm. over what they're doing. And I think that is, that is, that is where the fear of you know, those mm. proverbial um, F-ups come from. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's the, that, 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 that really is the key. And mm. I've had that before and after experience where you've worked in that environment where you had no visibility and then you've worked in a team where mm. you had not complete visibility because yeah. you can't see what everyone's working on or browsing on there, but you can see the progress of jobs. You can see mm. that workflow. You can see what's going out the door. You can see what's late. You can see who's got capacity. And for me, that's, mm. that's, that's, a, that's a critical thing. OK, so we're up to number 10 now. We've got a bonus one, and I think this one is something that just wraps everything up as a whole. Um, I think, you know, we've all heard about this whole arts and crafts thing in the past and the fact that we have to actually justify what we do as marketers. Um, you know, speaking to Barbara, this is a situation that Barbara or most of us find yeah. ourselves in. You know, it's all about having that nice PowerPoint at the end. It's all about, OK, guys, we actually do more than just animations and mm. PowerPoint. Mm. So um, before we get to questions, and we've got some coming through now, so please type the rest in, um, let's just wrap this all up. Mm. Um, and, you know, what does this mean? How can we get away from it? And, you know, what are your final thoughts on this whole topic? I know so many CMOs and marketing directors and marketing managers who, instead of leading the team mm. and inspiring the team, spend their lives sitting in steering committee meetings mm. and committee, you know, departmental meetings, just showing and telling yep. via a PowerPoint presentation that somebody spent five hours putting together once a week or once a month. I mean, some organisations do this every week, Sarah. Mm. It's just like, this is what we're working on this week and here's my beautiful PowerPoint presentation. And they spend their lives just reporting mm. on what their team's doing. And I think that is a fundamental flaw of the system mm. um, in which we so, we so many of us find ourselves mm. operating. So I think for me, you know, visibility is the, is, is the key and, and getting those metrics right, Sarah. Mm. It's, it's, it's what do the marketing team actually do, OK? Yep. Um, and if you can define that and then report on it, and uh, provide access to those reports in, a, in an accessible, you know, nice looking dashboards with meaningful metrics, mm. then I think you're going to bring a whole heap of credibility back to the marketing department. Yep. And once again, I think it's just that visibility, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Having that visibility, having yeah. access, instant, and removing that need for that whole yeah. show and tell and just yeah. having access to yeah. something and then we can start doing yeah. as opposed to just talking about yeah. it without doing that. Um, OK, well, that brings us close towards the end. Um, what I want to do uh, before we get to questions is just uh, refer people to complete the feedback survey if you do need to leave. Um, also refer down to the resource tab. We've got some great resources in there for you to take a look at, including our blog, which is full of insights interviews and some very interesting reads from some other fellow marketers that we've spoken to in the past. Um, also, if anyone is interested in looking for a single source of truth that removes complexity from your organisation and makes you feel completely in control and more effective, um, look no further than simple. There's also a link in the bottom of the resources um, and take a look at that because the whole idea is to help everyone out there plan, create and optimise everything they're currently doing. Um, there's the sales pitch, um, but as we go forward to the questions, keep them coming. We do understand some of you do have to leave, but if you do complete the survey um, in the feedback tab, we will actually send you a copy of the recording so you can forward it on to your teams or send it to your CEO to sort of justify everything that we've just Absolutely. spoken about. Yeah. So we do have some questions now. So the first one is from uh, Christine. So Christine, do you have any advice on sales and marketing alignment? This is also a big one that has come up yeah, <laughs> recently, so, so it, you know. It, it's, it's, it, and there are so many people who have attempted to answer this yep. question. I think, again, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's, 
it's like you've got one department that speaks Greek and mm. another that speaks Spanish, and they don't trust each other because they don't because there's no visibility over mm. the you know. Particularly, I think, and I've sat on both sides of the fence, yep. and I'm and involved on both sides of the fence. But I think, particularly the sales, you know, the sales guys look at marketing and they go, "You guys just you know you're in you get in our way rather yeah. than enable us." And, you know, the leads you're throwing over the fence are no good. And that's why, you know, that's putting pressure on us. We're not going to hit our target. We're not going to hit our bonus, mm. you know. So I think that's, it's, and I think, you know, coming from, I mean, I've done, I've done a lot of, done a lot of work in the marketing automation space. And mm. it's the same, you know, again, what do marketing, marketing actually do? Mm. And I think it comes down to that visibility, those metrics. You know, as I mentioned, one of my favorite metrics is, is lead score done mm. well. And interesting moments, you know, those kind of things that sales guys just go, oh my God, mm -hmm. marketing actually do something. They said, who set this up? Yeah. Um, wow. Where and did it's, come it, from? So I think the alignment between sales and marketing, look, we all know as well as marketers and everybody on this, on this webcast knows that, you know, marketing the customer or the prospective customer is needing to speak to sales a lot later in the mm. process, if at all in some cases, yep. and that marketing sort of share of that funnel, if you like, to, to, to coin another marketing cliche, is getting larger and larger and larger. Mm. So I think there's going to have to be, you know, there is going to have to be more alignment, but I think you know, the visibility, if sales could see what marketing were working mm -hmm. on, just as if the CEO could see what marketing would work on, they would maybe hold back from criticising, go, I didn't know you mm. guys were even, you know, we just thought you guys were always out at lunch and always, you know, yeah. you know, making pretty pictures and uh, pretty brochures. So yeah. I think for me that's the that's the thing. Let them into your systems. Yeah. Show them your systems. But most nothing marketers to hide. can see Salesforce. Yeah. Most, most marketers have a login to Salesforce. Yep. They can see the pipeline, but the sales guys can't see what marketing they're doing. Yeah. So I think that's the, for me that's the key. Final question from Evelyn. We've got 60 seconds yep. to go. So I understand there are platforms like this available like you just mentioned, what is the minimum amount of team members that you need to actually put in something like this? Oh, look, um, I mean, a, a, at a minimum level, I would say around about five. Yep. Um, at, a, at a minimal level. Mm. Um, but it's not, I mean, I, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday who said, we've only got one product. Do we need a system like this? And I was saying, you've got one product, but you advertise in all these channels. You've got yeah. a hell of a lot of campaigns going out the door for this one product. So I don't think it's so much about team size. Mm. Um, it's it's about efficiencies and, and, and time saving. But but five, I would say, to answer the question, is the, yeah. is the minimum that I would, you know, yeah. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. Thank you, Rob. Um, I think, if anything, the three th key things that I've picked up today has been visibility, feedback and communication. So much like life, I think you need those three things to make it all happen, don't you? Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. You, uh, we hope to see you at future events. Um, please complete the survey and keep a lookout for the recording. Bye for now. Thank you.